Hi all, so today we have an illustration here of a cross section of an E. coli cell kind of floating on top of some healthy cells. Now this is just a conceptual piece that is being used in a storyboard. Now the artist here wants to highlight this cell because currently it's kind of difficult to differentiate and focus on the E. coli cell and differentiate it from the the background of the healthy cells. Now, one of the things that they've done is added in this outer glow, which which is okay. It's something that you can do, but I'm going to show you a couple of different methods and also maybe why this 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 might not be the only solution. So, let's get into it. So, the first thing is adding in an outer glow like this. It looks like they've just um, painted it in and it looks like they've got a mask. I'm just going to invert it just so you can see how this mask looks. Now, the only issue is when you're painting outer glows is that you're not going to get a uniform glow all the way around. You can see with the paintbrush here, there's some that's expanded, uh, the gradient's expanded a little bit more uh, in comparison to the other sides, and then some are a little bit thicker in opacity, and you know, there, there isn't a gradual fade or anything like that. So I don't usually like to paint outer glows like this uh, because, you know, there's, there's risk of it being just uh, slightly a little bit messy. Uh, especially if you're working with like uh, darker colors uh, like black. With white it's not as noticeable but with, with darker colors it really does show up especially if you're using print or if it's shown on a video screen. So one option that you can do um, to get, oh, I'm just going to duplicate this layer. One option you can do to get an outer glow is to use layer styles. And I want to encourage people to try using this more often because you can really do a lot really easily. So basically, if you double click on your layer, um, the artist has nicely grouped the E. coli cell together and has labeled everything as you should with proper housekeeping. Um, double click on your layer just to open up layer styles here and then here you can click on the option outer glow and then from here what you can do is you can make adjustments to your glow uh, so that it's gradual uh, if you want and if you want to increase the spread to make it a lot thicker you can do that as well but I usually just tend to just adjust the glows here. Now if I change it to like a dark color so you can see, now you can see that the glow is all uniform throughout. There is a gradual uh, gradient that's uh, occurring and there's no kind of um, thicknesses or, or variation uh, in terms of the, the way that the glow is being presented. For internally our team we usually use outer glows for a couple of things. We use outer glows um, if things are being inflamed. We use outer glows if things are being highlighted. In this case, Outer Glow could work, but I want to try out some other options first before I immediately jump to the Outer Glow option, okay? So I'm going to show you um, these options. So since this is a cell floating on top of an environment, I'm using layer styles to create a couple of things. So the first thing is going back to basics and is looking at your line work. And the first thing that I notice is that the background line work is a lot thicker than the foreground line work. So we need to fix that. Really, anything in the foreground should have a lot thicker line weights. So I'm just going to thicken the line weights here just by adding in a stroke layer style. And I can increase or decrease the line weights really easily, really, really quickly, just to see how well I can pull this image uh, out away from the background. Now, I don't want to go too comic booky for this illustration, so I'm just going to drop it back to two pixels of an outer light. And already that's kind of separated from the background and kind of pulled it forward just ever so slightly. The next thing I thought would be great is since this is floating above the cells, let's add in a drop shadow so that we make an environment and have it connect with the other cells so that it's not just looks like it's a stamped on thing. So I'm looking at the way that they've rendered out the values here and it looks like the light is coming from the top left hand corner. So I'm going to add in um, a drop shadow here. Now the great thing about this drop shadow is, you know, I can move the distance and everything like that, which is fantastic. If I make sure I uncheck use global light, that means I have a lot of flexibility on adjusting the angle of my drop shadow um, without affecting the angles of other drop shadows that I've used before. So I've got that in and I've got it very, very subtle uh, and it looks quite nice. Uh, but we know that, you know, sometimes shadows, they also have a gradation in terms of from dark to light. So I'm just going to add in another drop shadow here. And you could do that. You could add multiple drop shadows in your layer styles just by clicking the plus button. You can add two drop shadows here. So I've added a second drop shadow and then just kind of pulled it a lot closer to the base of the E. coli cell and then just made it a little bit darker. And then you could kind of see it toggling on and off. So how, oh wait, what that looks like. Okay, so that's it toggled on and off. So that's two drop shadows. 
So I think that already, uh, if I blur my eyes, that kind of pulls it out a little bit more. So that really does help. Another thing that you can do to try and push everything back and pull this E. coli forward is just to add a mask in, in, for the background cells. So I'm just going to oh, just group and label my cells for good housekeeping. And I'm gonna add in a mask here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this over and pull this over. Just really soft. There you go. So already uh, that kind of pushes everything back and then pulls the E. coli cell forward so that it is in focus. Okay, so um, these are just uh, some small tips and tricks just to try different options to uh, pull it forward. I think I'd rather this because then the background is not fighting with the foreground main character. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.